Okay, so I realized that I have some things to show you. I'm super excited, but boy, have I packed it into the studio right now. Um, so one of the things that I wanted you to see is um, these are the panels that have that are just basically unprepared whatsoever. And this one has been living in the garage, and so it has got a spider made a home on it. Let me get that, uh, get that off of there. Go, 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 go away. Okay. Um, and I wanted you to kind of get an idea. These have been living in my garage for quite some time. Um, these panels, okay, so I finally remember the man's name. His last name is Bonham. And he made, you know, these are the most incredible things ever. Um, because they have been living in my garage for, I don't know, years, decades, at least. And they are still incredibly sound. And I live in Houston, y'all. So being in my garage, that is not an easy thing. It is hot. It is humid. And so I would expect for this to have had some sort of warping, some sort of something. And it has not. So one of the reasons why I wanted to do a video, you're not going to see me wrap these. But it's that I have to prep these. I can't just wrap them in the, I can't just wrap these and be like, okay, I'm good. I'm done. Um, it doesn't work that way. Um, I have to prepare the canvas to actually be wrapped. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is this. So I also will work on pre-wrapped, pre-done canvases. These are for Michaels. Y'all, these are affordable, they are inexpensive. They, well, they can be inexpensive um, if you get them on sale. These were on sale. Y'all, I had a lot of fun. Um, so I have thought of some things that I wanna do with some of these. And I had to show you because, one, these are super cute. Um, my daughter, my six-year-old, sees me painting and she's like, I want to do it too. So you get canvases that you can do with her. She didn't like the little teeny tiny ones. She wanted something bigger. Um, but I was able to get all kinds of sizes. Now, the nice thing is, is that these were custom created. Okay, I had to have these custom made. Um, I only have so many. And so I really have to make sure that I am using these for the project and doing symbols of cultures around the world. But I, as you know, from having done the Longhorn, which is still in progress. So um, if I push this video in a random location, you'll know that the Longhorn was still in process when I made this video. I needed to prep my, my canvases to do the next um, painting. But sometimes I want to work on something else. I'll have this other idea. Like I currently now, after seeing these little, those little ones, um, I want to do some paintings for some friends that have hearts in them, but they're small. So they don't take up a lot of space. So they can pretty much, we'll put them anywhere. Um, and you know, it allows me the opportunity to have a break or a breather when I'm not hundred percent sure of what the next painting is going to be. And it also gives me so that I have time, like I can prep the canvas, I can prep the board, I can then wrap it because it is a process. Um, so, but I went a little crazy. Um, well, not a little crazy. I went and was able to get a number of canvases at a reasonable price because like I said, you know, materials for painting. Yeah, it's not, um, it's not an inexpensive endeavor if you decide to paint. And so knowing that you can keep an eye out for a sale is helpful. Um, because when you know they're going to eventually go on sale, you can kind of prepare yourself, keep a lookout, have a budget that you've set aside so that when they, when you see them, come up on sale, you know that you've got a budget set aside so that you can go get them. Uh, 
Um, but I hadn't put them away. So my, uh, my route for painting has been kind of blockaded. And then I mentioned that I found a canvas that had been hiding in the garage because we had stuck stuff in front of them. So we have the rest of those, and here's my gesso. This is what I was looking for. So I've got some gesso because I'm gonna need that. I can't do, I can't do these. I can't get these gessoed if I don't have gesso. So when you have a panel like this, now sometimes if you're having, if you're buying a pre-made panel, sometimes they're already pre they're already prepped, but these are not. You need a brush. You need your gesso and I'm going to only do one layer so that because I'm sure that you're going to be able to understand and get this idea fairly easily is when you go to prep this, you're going to get your strokes going in one direction. You're going to let that dry. I'm not going to make y'all hang around and wait for the gesso to dry. And then you're going to do another lit coat this direction. Okay. I usually like to do two to sometimes three coats. This is going to make this surface, even though I'm wrapping it with canvas, it's going to help kind of seal it a little bit. Um, I want to make sure that this board is very well preserved when I paint. And so therefore I gesso it. Um, if I was doing an acrylic piece or if I was going to do a collage piece for one of them, I would come in here, I would gesso, and I would even gesso the sides because I'm going to want to paint those sides, right? Oh my gosh, to tell you the job that this man did putting these together. I mean, this is just so beautiful. The joins for each of these, so beautifully crafted. Um, I mean, these are a piece of, this is a piece of artwork in of itself, which is why he signs his work. Um, so... If I want to do a collage piece on this, I don't have to wrap these, but I will have to gesso them, right? I have to prepare the board to be able to actually accept paint. So I can put gesso down on top of this. Now, you have the ability to apply different kinds of grounds to different kinds of boards. Like if I wanted to, even though I would not recommend doing this, I could do pastels on this because I can get a pastel ground that I can paint over this after it's been prepped with gesso. And then I could take my pastels and I could put a pastel over this. However, I do not want to leave a pastel exposed to the air. It has to be, it has to go under glass. Like you cannot just leave it like, Hey, I'm just going to hang out there because in the slightest thing, it's going to smudge smear and then it's over. So those have to go behind glass, but um, I don't, I have something else that I do when I actually feel the need to do pastels. Um, but I'm going to gesso these. I'm going to go ahead and do two of these at a time because I have room on my table to do two, to prep two. Um, I'm going to get some of the ones that are finished hung up on my wall so they're not sitting on the floor. So I have a little bit of, um, so I have some kind of, if you will, some behind the scenes maintenance stuff to take care of. Because right now I've been kind of processing and waiting and determining if some of these are finished. Uh, just like I showed you with the standing stones, like that one is now done. I have to kind of live with it for a little bit, um, live with it in a vertical position, like it's hanging on a wall so I can determine whether or not I like it. And then uh, I hang them in my art space on the wall behind me um, so that I can get them off the floor. Um, my house, I have a lot of, well, I do have a lot of wall space. I don't hang my stuff everywhere. Um, but this will allow me to get these pieces up and off the floor it will allow me to um, then have these gessoed and prepped and I can wrap these so that I'll be ready for the next one in the series. Um, sometimes, as you're going to see when I'm doing this series, is that I might get stuck and I'm not really, you know, an image just really isn't coming to mind. And so as a result of that, I will grab the square ones. Like right now I just had this and I just, boy, y'all, when I put this table down, I just really kind of messed up my, my camera zone too. Um, I absolutely, uh, here we go. All right. 
I absolutely um, love this idea of painting these little squares with hearts in them um, as a gift. And so that's now kind of stuck in my head. So a lot of times I end up kind of multitasking. They're little, they won't take very long, um, although they could, some of the detail that I'm thinking of. I wanna add some gold leaf. And so that's the other thing that comes into play. Well, I'll be able to show you how to add gold leaf into a watercolor because um, it can be a little tricky because glue is water soluble often. And so you have to pay attention and just be very, very careful. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get these, start getting these gessoed. Um, I know people, ah, okay, I haven't used this in a hot second. Um, I seal my stuff on, so I usually tighten it pretty tight. Um, eh, it does not want to come up. Ah, there it goes. Ha. Okay. Um, I know folks who um, dilute their gesso. Um, I don't. Um, I just use it straight, but it does need to be. Apparently, I need to stir mine. That's a little odd. All right. And then one of the nice things about this is I'm just going to. All right, so doing this is no different than you would anything else. I'm just going to pay attention to what direction I'm going in. I don't need a super thick coat, so this will spread really nicely. Yes, for those of you who are brush aficionados, I'm using my extraordinarily nice Skyflow brush to do my gesso. It's okay. It washes out. <laughs> I take very good care of my brushes. I clean them very well. And I don't use that many. Like this is one of those things. All right, so this is one of the reasons why I want you to be able to kind of see this is that uh, there are sometimes stuff gets attached to my canvas and there's a little spot of something. The gesso kind of brings that out and you're able to kind of either pick it up that way. Where's my palette knife? Or, okay, that is just part of the canvas. So, I now know that I've got a slight imperfection in the board. And that is prop most likely because I have stored this out of my garage. And I'm just going to work my way across the whole board both of them i'm going to let it dry and then i'll come back and go in the other to make sure that i make a pass going in the other direction because again i want my board to be nice and sealed and prepped and i already know that some of the designs that i want to do will most likely be a collage piece and one of the benefits to that is that, hey, it's not canvas. I don't have to wrap it. But I will want to have prepped this. And if I am going to prep it for a collage piece, I need several more layers of gesso. It might be overkill, but I would probably be looking at the neighborhood of four to five layers of gesso if I'm going to prep it to do um, a collage piece because I don't want there to be any risk All right, come on. I know I can get that over there. There we go. I'm like, I don't need to get more gesso for that. And I just kind of keep going over this. I'm okay if there's little ridges because of the paintbrush. I'm okay if there's little grooves because of the paintbrush. But I do want to move this around.
Uh, I'm smoothing it out a little bit. I get rid of some of these off and on. All right, then that just needs to sit there and dry. And once it's dry, I'll go in the other direction. So I hope that for those of you who are interested in actually, you know, using this as a means of learning how to paint and use watercolors, that you have options. You know, you can paint on paper, obviously. But I wanted you to know that you have, there's choices. You don't always just have to paint on paper. And for those of you who are interested in kind of dipping a toe into canvas, but you don't want to make the investment into um, the Frederick's um, archival canvas, um, you can go and grab, it works. Um, the I get them from Michael's. Uh, I'm sure there's other places you can get them from. And it's possible there are other canvases. I just happen to have found that one. I like the way that one works. I like the way the I like the way that the water works on it, the watercolor works on it. So um it has been kind of my go-to um canvas for when I know I'm gonna be doing something with watercolor on a pre-made canvas, right? Not one that I'm creating. So I hope this helps you. And, you know, there is something kind of soothing, I gotta say, about um, prepping a canvas. It's very meditative, especially if I stop talking. All right. Um, anyhow, I hope that this video finds you well and that you learned a little something from it anyway. And I want you to go and have an amazing, amazing day, week, evening, whatever you happen to be at home when you come across this video. And as always, I hope to see you soon in the next video.